here we are at Lost Maples State Natural Area in Texas. And this is my very first solo backpacking trip. I know, I know, some of you are thinking right now, seriously, your first solo backpacking trip and you've been backpacking since you were 10? I get it, I get it, okay, like this should have happened by now. But it just hasn't because I've always had somebody to backpack with and I personally see that as a blessing because, you know, it's more fun to backpack with other people. And since Josh and I have been together for so long and we both enjoy backpacking, we've never really had to go by ourselves. We've always had somebody to go with. However, Josh had to work this week and I need to sleep outdoors. I can't explain it to anyone who's not an avid outdoors lover, but for those of you who are, you get it. Like there's just something about sleeping outdoors that you need. It's fulfilling. Um, the, the stars and the rain and the wind and the grass and the sounds and the separation and it's wonderful. So I'm actually really looking forward to backpacking solo this trip. It, it's, it's just gonna be two nights out in Lost Maples and it's gonna be pretty chill. It's not a super long or super difficult trail. It's only a couple miles from home. And of course I took some precautions since I am backpacking on my own. At least two people know where I am and where I am expected to be hiking and also when I'm expected to hike out. So if those people don't hear from me by whenever the heck I'm supposed to be back, they'll know to call in the cavalry to make sure that nothing's happened to me. I haven't fallen off a cliff or broken my ankle in the backcountry or whatever. That said, it does sound like I am the only person with a backcountry reservation this week. So I should run into plenty of people it looks like day hiking these trails, but I will be fully alone out there, which not gonna lie, pretty stoked about. So let's get moving. Pretty out here already. best spot to take a break for lunch is one where you can also soak your feet. We'll see about that. Let's check it out. Definitely a monkey. It's quite warm today. Also humid. Turned out to be very sunny, not rainy, which I'm glad of, but whoo, I'm real warm. Also, my crappy clip-on sunglasses from Walmart are broken, so that's kind of a bummer, because my wimpy blue eyes can't handle all of this sun, but we're making them work. They just pop off every minute and a half or so. No big deal. Now's when I really wish I would have had my trekking poles. Ooh. Yep. It's up. It's a lot up. Came from down there. three hours. <laughs> and I just saw a snake swimming in the uh, the lake there. So I'm not afraid of snakes, but I am respectful of their space. So that will be the end of my swimming today. Here's where I have to work for my dinner. Man, those trekking poles would have come in handy. All the way back up the way I came, just because I wanted to go for a swim. Well, I made it up that very long, very steep hill and made it to campsite B here at Lost Maples. And I think I have found my site and it's time to set up camp.
So I hiked about four miles today, give or take. So not a lot, a pretty short mileage day, but I didn't get really started until like 1.30 or thereabouts. So no big deal. Have plenty of time to chill, you know, take a swim, whatever. Um, I'm just hanging. The sun is setting soon and it got kind of cloudy. So I hope it doesn't rain tonight. But just in case, I have my rain fly ready on my Kamek Mantis so that I don't get soaked if it does rain. My bag might get soaked because it's not quite under the tarp, but eh, we'll find out. So here's to that. I'm gonna read a little bit, chill, maybe listen to an audio story. I don't know. See you in the morning. So I found a spring just in time because I'm about out of water. So I am going to fill up a water bottle, purify some of the spring water, and I will have more water to drink in a half an hour. So because it's a spring, I'm not going to bother filtering it and then purifying it. Um, I'm going to just use my purification tablets here that are not iodine so they won't make the water taste bad but first I will sort of filter it through this bandana but not through a full-on filter because that's a bit much. So I'm gonna get this wet first so it goes through easier. Put that right over here. And fill up my water bottle from the, the trickle down here. gonna take a minute. So I used a bandana, which I will now bring out and put back on my head, <laughs> to filter out any solids that might have like made it through the water, um, because that happens. I mean, it's spring water, it's natural, it's full of dirt in it and leaves. It is, I did fill my water bottle as close to the spring, um, like outlet as possible, uh, so it doesn't have a lot of chance to pick up all the nasties, uh, and probably nothing has peed in it recently. <laughs> that said, I still want to make sure I filter out any solids before I add my purification tablets. Yes, and I only need one. Put that on. Fill it up. I will wipe off the rim, and then I will pour it into my bladder so that I can drink purified water straight from the spring. Let's see, note the time. It's 10.42 a.m., so at 11.15, I can drink this. Huzzah! This is a little concoction of my own design with some freeze-dried vegetables and spices and herbs and stuff. This water I did filter twice because I got it from there. And it's clear. It's not like weird and green or anything. But first I filtered it through a bandana, poured it into my hydration pack. Then I used my Sawyer filter to filter it through a 0.2 micron water filter. And then I used a purification tab to make sure that I took care of everything like viruses, bacteria, and cryptosporidium cysts because who knows what's in that water? And because I did a giant circle today, I get to go right back up this super steep hill that I went down and up yesterday. Oh, I'm so excited. At least now, it's in shade. <laughs> That's a win. And I'm off. So it's a little bittersweet hiking out on the last day, but here we go. I am, however, craving a big old juicy veggie burger, so that may have to happen soon.
here we are back at the car made it back safe and sound my mother will be very pleased as she was the individual most worried about me and my survival out here alone of course plenty of people have asked in the past and did ask before this trip you know like wasn't i worried or was i scared to get out here by myself um no not really that said i've never had I guess what many would consider a healthy sense of fear. I don't worry unnecessarily about all of the things that could possibly happen. Of course, that said, I was concerned about pretty much the same things I'd be concerned about if I was backpacking with Josh. For example, a crazy person could kill both of us almost as easily as one of us, you know. Especially if we got surprised in our sleep. Either way, I worried that one of us is gonna get bitten by a snake. That said, overcoming these sorts of concerns is just a matter of preparation and um, planning. Honestly, when I backpack alone or with Josh, I carry a big knife and I am willing to use it. Other concerns, you know, snake bites, things like that. I'm just as likely to get bitten by a snake when I'm by myself as I am with Josh. It's just a matter of being prepared for that eventuality. For example, I don't carry a snake bite kit because those are totally unnecessary and don't work. But if I'm going alone, there are two other tools I need to take, like a whistle use in an emergency to blast out an SOS. Also, just when I'm hiking, knowing what parts of the trail I had service or might have service, like high points, things like that, and knowing that if something does happen, I just need to get back to one of those points where I had cell service and I can call for help, or if somebody comes across the trail and finds me in distress, I can tell them where they can get service so they can call for help. You know, stuff like that. It's important. But also making sure I am carrying all the tools I need to take care of myself, like a first aid kit, and also knowing how to react and respond if, say, an animal is to attack. You know, like you don't respond the same if there's a mountain lion as you do if there's a grizzly bear or a moose or a feral hog or whatever. And knowing how to respond to any encounters you may have with any animals who reside in the area in which you are hiking. Josh isn't out here to help me fight off a mountain lion, so I need to know what to do if I see one pop out of the bushes down the trail. That said, it's a beautiful thing being in the outdoors alone. Just the quiet and calm and having control over your own decisions for the day is great. I highly recommend it to anyone. Few tips though for ladies who are going backpacking solo, make sure you bring a knife or mace or something to defend yourself. Also make sure you know how to use things like a map and a compass. Make sure you know how to use everything in your first aid kit and how to react to things that might happen like pff, twisted ankles, snake bites. Uh, that sort of thing. Allergic reactions. But also maybe consider sticking to trails that are fairly well traveled. For example, especially if you're new to solo backpacking, maybe don't hike out into the wilderness where there are no trails and no cell service and uh, an emergency GPS is your only way to call out a distress signal. I feel pretty confident on a trail like this, even though there weren't that many people backpacking out there, there were plenty of day hikers who, if something were to happen to me, on the trail I twist an ankle or um, I pass out because of heat exhaustion or something like that somebody's going to find me within at least an hour and is gonna call for help and it's not gonna be that big of a deal hardly a half an hour passed out there that I didn't pass someone and that's a reassuring thing when you know that there are other people out there who can help and also the more people who are out there the less likely you're gonna need to use this on a crazy person because what crazy person is gonna attack you when like six people just passed you both on the trail i mean it seems highly unlikely that said no i am not afraid of solo backpacking as a female nor should you be just be smart about it that said dudes you need to be smart about it too Please look back at all of the tales you have ever heard of people getting like trapped and I don't know, um, having to saw their arm off. It was because they didn't go prepared. Okay? That's all. And all of those people were dudes. Okay? I can't think of a single story where a woman had to saw her own arm off because A, she didn't tell people where she was going, B, she didn't tell anybody when she was going to be back, and C, didn't have an emergency locating device or a way to call for help. So, this is not strictly a message for female solo backpackers. It is for men, boys, girls. Maybe small children shouldn't be solo backpacking, but it's for everybody. If you're going out there alone, 
just be smart about it. Thanks for watching guys and I'm gonna go get a veggie cheeseburger and probably some fries and maybe a milkshake because that's the food my dad taught me was what you ate after backpacking. <laughs> Peace out guys, wander on.